So before you just jump into making sprites for GB Studio, you should understand the limitations. At the top right, you can see my color palette, which I downloaded from the GB Studio um, .dev website. And for backgrounds, you can use the shades that you see here, uh, which include a light green, a dark green, pretty much white and black. But when you're doing sprites, like character sprites, for, for character sprites, you can only use the white, black, and light green. There can be no dark green on the character sprites, which does limit you to <laughs> you pretty hard. But you can still do creative things like um, this vampire looking guy here where I use the white for his face color and the green for some shading. So the characters are 16 by um, 16 by 16 and for the engine you need to have um, a character looking down up and to the right and this is all you need it'll flip the right to the left and um, for the main character if you want to make it look like they're walking you can do two frames for each direction which is awesome but this will count as six frames and you don't want to do this for every single NPC in your game you want to stick to the three because there's a, a, a limit in GB Studio to 25 unique frames um, in a scene so if you have an NPC that's not even walking around I just recommend making it one sprite like that the 25 unique frame limit isn't for just characters it's for any object that's going to be on top of the background all right now let's talk about the limitations of the background so the background the background is actually not 16 by 16 like the characters it's 8 by 8 and because it's 8 by 8 it means that you can add a lot more detail into the background you also have a, a second color that you can add i designed this sprite sheet to be 16 by 16 but when i'm editing it when i'm drawing the backgrounds I'll just break it up into um, the 8x8 to add extra details. So for the background, the limit is 192 unique uh, sprites. But if you look at this path right here, this path is actually only three unique 8x8 sprites. I just shuffled them to create variations. So you can do something like this, and this will only count as three sprites. Um, towards your limit. So something like this rock here, this is going to count as four sprites towards your 192 limit since each one of these is different. So you don't really want to have too many rock variations or tree variations. Even though I have these two tree variations right here, the upper part is exactly the same so these sprites would be, would be reused all right so once you have your sprites done let me show you how to draw the background you can download this free software called tiled from mapeditor.org there'll be a link in the description and you can also download it from itch if you download it from itch there'll be a recommended um, donation amount but you can still download it for free so once you got the program open what you'll want to do is um, go to File, New, New Map. And remember, the maximum size is 256 by 256. So this would be 32 by um, 32 tiles. And remember, do not have your tiles set to 16 by 16. Since Game Boy allows you to do 8 by 8 for backgrounds, you should keep it at 8 by 8 because you can do more detailed backgrounds. 256 by 256 is the maximum background size. The minimum is 160 by 144. And you can do anything between those numbers. So if you want, for example, the screen to pan up, you could still have the width be 160 and just make the height 256. So in the bottom right here, you can import a tile set. Just import the whatever PNG you created. And then up here, you would create a layer for that, for that tile set. So you can select any tile from your uh, tile set here and then just start drawing. You'll probably want to fill the entire background and there's a paint bucket tool here that'll do that for you. Um, another cool thing you can do is control and, and select multiple types of tiles. And then um, if you click on the random mode, 
pretty neat. Once you do have some tiles selected, for example, I have a corner here selected, you can rotate it with X and Z. So I imported another tile set here, houses. So I will create a new layer for this. All right, so when you're finally done making your scene, you go to File, Export as an Image, and make sure it's a PNG, and you'll be fine. If you want to make your own emotes, cursor, or um, text, you can just go ahead and open the file, edit it, and then save right over it. I have a frame set that I'm going to include in the description. I'll, um, I'll upload all the assets to itch so you can use them if you'd like. So when you want to use your own sprite art, what you need to do is actually put your art, save it into the folder location where your game is. You can't import it from, as far as I know, you can't import it from within the program. But it's no big deal to just save it into the folder. So I uploaded um, uh, uh, our main character here, it's a gnome. Remember that the bright green is transparency. And then if I go to backgrounds, um, I uploaded the map that I created. And we're gonna go ahead and start working on this. So if I go to the game world, we're going to add a scene. And here's our scene. By default, it just selected that, that wasn't me. The background we're going to select is um, this one here and now if I hit play you'll see that I'll be able to walk around this but there are no there are no colliders I can just walk around everything also let's swap out that arrow if you click on the little orange the little white arrow in the orange circle it can be kind of tricky but if you click on it on the right let's call this the inspector you'll be able to name it I'm gonna name this the player um, his name is actually Gerbs the Gnome and you can choose a starting direction this is the direction that the character will be facing I'll just set it to down for now a movement speed and an animation speed so I'll just keep our animation speed um, at 1 movement speed at 1 and I'm gonna swap out the sprite sheet to my Gnome so now if I hit play we should see that Instead of an arrow, we got a little no, but we can still walk over anything. So let's go ahead and add those walls. On the left here, there's a brick icon. It's, co it's collisions. And now you can go ahead and draw, draw over. You can't remember that the character doesn't go behind sprites. So for something like a tree, you might as well just cover it completely or else you'll just end up walking, walking over it. Because it doesn't need to be perfect. And um, let's test it out. yeah looks like it's working so as you can see we have one scene and if the character walks off of the scene <laughs> he appears on the opposite side <laughs> what will happen if i walk down <laughs> i'm in the trees <laughs> so um we'll want to create we'll want to create more um <laughs> more scenes that's a that's an easter egg man it's a secret we we'll want to create more scenes for the player to walk into and I'll show you how to transition from one scene to another and all sorts of other logic and gameplay in future videos. If you like this tutorial, um, make sure to like it, share it, and let me know what kind of tutorials you would love me to make in the comment section below. And remember that the links are in the description.